This video is covering the ear. It's part of the chapter, the senses. The ear is the organ of balance and also of hearing. And to give an account of balance and hearing, you need to know the detailed structure of the ear. And the best place to start is to draw the ear and label it. So whenever we think of our ear, we're thinking of the pinna, the part that's attached to each side of our head. It's made of cartilage and it's covered in skin. The pinna functions a bit like a funnel. It's there to channel sound waves into the ear, down towards the eardrum. So when sound waves enter the pinna, they're funneled in by the pinna, they enter into this canal, this long tube-like structure. It's called the auditory canal. At the end of the auditory canal is the eardrum, this thin membrane, often referred to as the tympanic membrane. On the back of the eardrum is the first of the three ossicles. These are the tiny bones inside the middle ear and they're known as the hammer, the anvil and the stirrup. The role of the ossicles is to transmit, so to pass on the vibrations from the middle ear to the inner ear and also to amplify those vibrations, so to transmit and to amplify. The first of the ossicles is the hammer and it's attached to the eardrum. So when those sound waves hit off the eardrum and it vibrates, it in turn causes the hammer to move. Attached to the hammer is the anvil and this in turn is attached to the last ossicle, the stirrup, which actually looks like a stirrup that you'd put your foot into if you were to get up on a horse. Your middle ear is connected to your throat, your pharynx, by the eustachian tube and the purpose of this is to equalise air pressure either side of the eardrum. Without this, the eardrum would perforate or burst. The last of the ossicles, the stirrup, is attached to this membrane called the oval window and when the stirrup moves, it pulls on the oval window and the vibrations are passed into the cochlea, the innermost part of the ear, through the oval window. The cochlea is part of the inner ear and it's very special because it contains fluid. Remember, all of the parts of the ear, the outer ear and the middle ear, only had air. Now we're in the inner ear and it is fluid filled. The cochlea is fluid filled. Inside the cochlea are these special hair-like receptor cells that when they move, they generate a nervous impulse. So once the vibrations enter into the cochlea through the oval window, they eventually have to find a way out. So once inside, those vibrations form pressure waves and those pressure waves are dissipated out or find their way out of the cochlea through the round window. Let's discuss a little bit about hearing, how we generate hearing. Well, sound is all caused by objects vibrating and those vibrations are passed through a medium, most cases it's air, into the ear. So remember the pinna is going to funnel those vibrations, those sound waves, into the auditory canal and then they will hit off the eardrum, the tympanic membrane, causing it to move. So when those sound waves entered into the auditory canal and eventually hit off the eardrum, they cause it to vibrate. This in turn causes the vibrations to be passed into the middle ear. This is because the first of the ossicles, the hammer, is attached to the back of the eardrum. When the eardrum vibrates, the hammer starts to vibrate and then the anvil starts to vibrate because it's attached to the hammer and then the stirrup starts to vibrate because it's attached to the anvil. And this is how those ossicles transfer the vibration and amplify those vibrations into the cochlea, the inner ear. The vibrations are passed into the cochlea through the oval window. Once inside the fluid-filled cochlea, those vibrations then establish pressure waves. Inside the cochlea are these hair receptor cells and they are stimulated to move or they move in response to those pressure waves that have now been established in the cochlea. And when they move, they generate the electrical impulse which gets sent to the brain via the auditory nerve. So just to look at a diagram to make sure you're familiar, the auditory nerve is the one that's in pink here and it's going to send those impulses directly to the brain. As well as being the organ of hearing, the ear is the organ of balance. And balance in the ear is all to do with the semicircular canals, these fluid filled tubes. And each tube is positioned in one of three planes and there are specialised hair receptors that will move to generate a nervous impulse. The part of the ear concerned with balance is the vestibular apparatus and it consists of the semicircular canals. These tubes, these canals are each positioned at right angles to each other so there's one in each plane and that's important. 
So in the semicircular canals is this fluid and also these hair-like receptor cells. And when the fluid in the semicircular canals moves because you've moved your head, it causes the hairs to move. And this results in the generation of a nervous impulse that gets sent to the brain via the vestibular nerve. So for your course, you have to discuss a disorder of the eye or the ear, and we always choose the ear, and the disorder is glue ear, so don't forget to state the name. Ordinarily, the middle of the ear contains air, and that allows those ossicles, the bones, to move. However, with glue ear, there's a build-up of a sticky liquid, and the ossicles cannot move, and so there is some degree of hearing impairment. So what is the treatment for glue ear? Well, some cases can just clear up without treatment. They just clear up on their own. And if they don't, grommets are one solution. A grommet is a tiny tube that's inserted surgically into the eardrum and it causes the fluid in the middle ear to drain away. The grommet will eventually fall out. Previously, we did also treat glue ear with medications, but now these are said to have limited impact. So what do you need to know about the ear? Well, you need to know the detailed structure of it, and this means being able to draw a diagram. It was previously asked that you draw a diagram of the ear. It's a very tricky diagram to draw. You would need to practice it. You need to know which parts contain air and which parts contain liquid, give an account of hearing, detail how balance is achieved, and explain glue ear. So the very best of luck with the revision. I hope the video helped. Make sure you're using your textbook. That's number one. You're drawing lots of diagrams, writing good notes and doing the exam questions. Best of luck.